The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. So my wife, Nicole, has been putting books into a Rubbermaid tote and putting them out in front of the house for the neighborhood kids to use as a little library. And for a long time now, she's been asking me to build a legit little box that looks like a little house and you can put books in it. And uh, well, I haven't gotten around to it. Unfortunately, about a week ago, we had a storm. Uh, both of us forgot to bring the books in and they got wet. So it was really sad, but we dried out as many of them as we could. And then I quickly ran out to get materials to make a little library. Uh, this is a very simple DIY project made with plywood. It's painted and put together with pocket screws. Here it is. I'm starting with a piece of BCX plywood from the home center. You can easily get all the parts from a four x four sheet. Now be careful with this stuff. My sheet was loaded with staples and you really don't want to hit one of those with a blade. The first cut is made just over the desired dimension. Factory edges are usually pretty gnarly, so this allows me to get two clean edges and hit my final dimension. Now if you don't have a table saw, you could do all of this breakdown using a circular saw. The pieces are then cross cut to length. The filler strips can be cut to width, but leave them oversized in length. Same thing on the quarter inch back panel, just leave it oversized for now. And there's all the parts except for the door. The sides of our case are tapered, so I lay out the line and make the cut at the table saw. Now for the pocket screws. Pocket screws are certainly strong enough for this application, but every joint will benefit from some waterproof glue. I could then secure the sides to the bottom. Now we can mark the distance between the sides and cut the filler strips to length. Each one gets two pocket holes in each end. The top edge of the strip gets a bevel to match the taper of the sides. I'll get the exact angle from the case and then set the table saw for the bevel cut. Now I can attach the strips to the case. Next we can mark out the back panel and cut it to final dimension. We can then glue it securely to the case. Once dry, I'll use a block plane to flush it up with the angled top. And finally, we can attach the top using glue and screws. Next up, we'll make the door. I'm using some poplar because that's what I have on hand, but you're better off using an outdoor friendly species like cedar or cypress. The groove for the glass panel is cut at the table saw. The kerf is a little bit wide for our glass panel, but I'll be squirting in some caulk to help take up the gap. Now I can get the dimension for the glass panel from the door frame itself. Cutting glass can be a little bit scary if you've never done it before, but with a little scoring tool it's actually easier than it looks. Just score once, and then hang the piece over the edge of a table and snap it off. With gloves on, of course. It'll leave a slightly jagged edge, but that edge will live inside a groove, so it's really no big deal. A quick test fit looks good, so now we'll drill the pocket screws for the door frame. I'll connect three of the door parts first. I'll then add some blue tape on each side of the groove and squeeze in some silicone caulk. This will help make the door watertight, but also helps the glass from rattling since it is a bit loose. Now I can slide the glass in and attach the final door part. We took some shortcuts with the door construction, so I'll take a minute to fill any exposed holes. I'll also add some blue tape to the glass panel and caulk around the inner perimeter for some extra water protection. The frame can then be sanded and the edges are eased with a sanding block. Now for the hinges. These are basic Euro style full overlay hinges. I've got some setup jigs that make this installation process pretty easy. Once the door is drilled, I could transfer the center locations from the door to the case and then use a second jig to drill the holes for the brackets, which is something I apparently forgot to film. Now feel free to use any hinges you like. 
Now here's where I notice a little mistake. My upper hinge is just too high, so I'm gonna have to remove some material from that upper strip. On yours, make sure that your hinge is just a little bit lower so that it clears the strip. For the paint, I probably should have used something that I could brush on, but I was in a bit of a rush and I used a rattle can of exterior paint. It really looked like garbage after the first coat, but thankfully the second coat evened things out and made it look better. Of course, you'll want to protect the glass when you paint the door. Once the paint is dry, I can install the hardware. And the door gets a cute little wooden knob. And here it is all loaded up with books. I'm happy to say that the library has endured several rainstorms with absolutely no water infiltration. But if you're concerned, you can add a rubber or foam seal around the door and include a latch. For now, this is going to get the job done. If you want to build one for yourself, you can download our free plan at thewoodwhisperer.com.